So here I am with Mike Rinaldi. Can you tag me and Mike together? Mike Rinaldi. He went to the best university on the planet several years ago, Fresno Pacific University. He really enjoyed the Bible class a lot. In fact, one thing he really liked, believe it or not, was the Upside Down Kingdom book, hoping you're liking it as much as Mike. But Mike is a screenwriter. He'll probably be one of our most famous graduates. So keep an eye on Mike Rinaldi out of Visalia. He went to the main campus, but he's from Visalia. Uh, went to Golden West High School, if that rings a bell, you Visalia people. Look him up, be praying for him. He loved this book. I'm going to be telling you a great story about Mike in a little bit. Some of this will be review. Some of it will be new. We're looking at nine signs. Signs are significant. That's why we have assigned you so many signs. In fact, we have, an, have even designed for you a signature assignment. Be thinking about that, how often the word sign shows up all over the place. It's very significant. So I don't want you to miss uh, how key that term is. So I'm going to start with number nine today. I like to think upside down, and I like to work a little bit backwards. These are some signs we'll be looking at throughout the class. But you may know this already. When you get to the end of your assignment, your signature, your signature assignment will be to write a paper on the New Testament book of Philemon. We'll be looking at that in just a little bit for most of you. But there's a question mark here, because if you look at your assignment, the way we have designed it for you, you are supposed to create a sign that reflects for you what is significant about the book of Philemon. Are you going crazy with the sign word yet? So everything in this class is to get you thinking in pictures like Eastern, Asian, Jewish, Hebrew people did and do. And signs are very significant, word pictures and so on. So you'll be called to create a sign. Hopefully one you're not afraid to sign your signature to when you do your signature assignment. All right, the basic idea of the class, hopefully you remember, is the three worlds. Anytime you read a text, you're looking for the historical world, the world behind the text, the literary world, the world created by the text, and the contemporary world, that's you and I, in front of the text today. So number one, three worlds. Number two, most of you are familiar with Bennett, with the Venn diagram. So it's called that because very often one of the most helpful way to read a text or interpret the Bible from a three-world way is to do a Venn compare and contrast. Remember we did that with the two Genesis creation accounts, Genesis 1 and 2. Remember we did that with the two versions of the Ten Commandments, one in Exodus 20, one in Exodus 34. If you're ever in a class with the Gospels or Bib 314, you'll actually be saying, well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, several things to compare, contrast there. Very helpful. Hopefully you all know that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. That's a chiasm, a reverse parallelism. Here's where I'll tell you a story. In fact, first, let me show you one. So Mike loved the class. Mike is a screenwriter. Here you see him uh, with a plaque from Act One, Christian Screenwriters Guild. And so he thinks very creatively. He's an artist. Hopefully you'll hear much about him soon. But watch this. You know what that is? I hope you can see it. That is a chiasm. Not a simple one. First shall be last, last shall be first. But look at this. This is the story of Noah from Genesis chapter 6, and I'll post this for you so you can take a look at the detail, but all that to say, sometimes a chiasm is not just A, B, B, A, but look how far this one goes. Suffice to say, you'll have fun looking at that, comparing how beautiful, symmetrical chiasms can be. So Mike, as a Christian, he thought, you know, uh, one of the famous screenwriters, Blake Snyder, I love this guy, but I don't know if he'd ever have time to talk to me. He's very well known. But, you know, because I love my class at FPU and I learned all about creative, provocative writing 
sometimes even chiasm is found in this book. You know, it's kind of like a screenwriter's book. He said, you know, I'm going to write to Blake Snyder and so just say something like, hey, have you ever heard of chiasm? Yeah, I think it might be helpful to write a script that way. Just wonder what you think. Figured he may never hear back, but he actually got an email back, and they started this conversation about chiasm. Well, where'd you learn it? Well, I learned it in a Bible class at a place called Fresno Pacific, and Blake was so fascinated by the idea of chiasm, and then eventually through this conversation with Mike, became so fascinated and reading the Bible, thinking, man, there's beautiful patterns 